post-lunch calories now, putting us to sleep. Just a refresher, we talked about hallway movement, all of our hallway intersections, approaching doors, assessing doors, breaching closed doors, dealing with open doors, and we've gotten to the point of getting that initial point of domination in the room, right? And the, the points of domination in the, a room just like this, one of us is gonna end up in this corner, one of us is gonna travel down this wall and end up in that corner, and at, we've trained up until that point. Everybody good with all that, okay? The next follow-on tasks from that are to deal with whatever else in this room cannot be cleared from those points of domination, okay? So, for an example, if I've hit my point of domination already, what, you guys can probably see it, what can I not see behind? I can't see behind the couch, right? And if Gary's at his point of domination in that right corner, he can't see behind that couch either, okay? Uh, I'm gonna throw this in here now before it becomes a complication later. So we have the dead space in this room, but notice I've also got a closed door in this room, okay? So I'm, we're gonna talk about dealing with this room, but we can't forget that there's follow-on rooms, whether it's a closet or a completely separate space, all right? I'm bringing that up now because how we're gonna deal with the dead space is affected by that closed door. And if it's open, it's even worse. Does that make sense for everybody? Okay. So with that in mind, uh, there's two different types of dead space. Dead space that's in the center of the room that's fairly easy to deal with. All we have to do is shift left or right. Okay. Opposing danger areas, which I have set up in the next room, we're going to take that kind of like we took the T with two guys. All right. And we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. But keeping in mind that we do have a closed door uh, right over here that I don't want to walk I don't want to put my back to that, okay? At this point, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say shift left, right? And as long as Gary agrees with that, and there's nothing to argue about, we're, we're going to shift. So we're going to start moving, and I'm basically clearing behind this couch as we're moving. I'm going to get right up here, check behind the couch. So at this point, I'm facing that door. If that door changes, both Gary and I are going to see it, and we can deal with it, right? But I can clear this dead space behind this couch, clear it all the way, and now we can deal with the next problem, the next thing that's going to kill us, which would then be the closed door. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. What, what, what's the angle that we're using right here? Uh, a 90 degree angle, right? Which is usually a really good way to clear problems, whether we're talking about cars. What we don't want to do is, obviously, you'll see people clearing structures, clearing cars especially, where they start putting muzzles right in each other's faces. And if there is a threat in between us, what we don't want to do is have to shoot our buddy through that threat, right? That's, that's what we're trying to avoid. Yep. So when we can, we're trying to get cross coverage on an unknown or any threat for that matter. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get that 90 degree coverage. That's, that's, the, that's the goal. So, and we're, we're making the shift call, shift left or shift right, so that everybody in the room, and right now we're only working in twos, but if we've got four, six, eight guys in here on a clearing team, if I say shift left, everybody in the room knows that we need to shift in the room to de-conflict the potential for there to be shooting through that couch at a bad guy and then impacting Gary on the other side of that, right? If it's a smaller space, we might all have to get on the same wall, okay? Uh, from here, once this space is completely cleared, uh, I'm just, hey, closed door, room's done, closed door, and we can just move up. Does it make sense in this situation for me to have the excessive movement to come over here and go behind Gary? It's not necessary. It's excessive movement, takes time, and you're exposing yourself to that doorway, even though it's a closed door. So we get over here. At this point, I'm set. I'm going to give a barrel nod because there's, there's no other form of communication that's going to work. I can't squeeze him from here. He's going to go ahead and breach. And we can threshold this. So the breacher is typically going to be the one, right? It's his door. So he's going to breach. We're going to come into this next space and we're going to own this next room. You guys slide down to this room. So our points of domination in this room, right? We're married to this wall. We're glued to that back wall. These are our points of domination. Where can we not see behind right now? I got two chairs, right? 
does this kind of look like a T hallway? Yeah. Yep. So we've got opposing danger areas. Easiest way to do this, uh, we're just going to move up towards them. And just like we deal with that, we're going to barrel nod. That's the indicator to switch. And we're going to check behind the, the dead space in the room. Mine's clear, his clear, and we roll out. Does it make sense for everybody? Okay. Uh, if this was not in the way, you know, we would meet up a little bit closer. But basically, we're utilizing cross coverage just like we did in the T hallway. We're utilizing cross coverage. We get to that point where we switch, check, and then we're good. The room is clear and we can move on from there. Does that make sense? Those are the most common things you're going to run into is uh, dead space somewhere in the room that we can shift around to clear behind or opposing danger areas. Okay? And then, of course, follow on rooms. And just like we talked about in the hallway, just like we talked about on the room entry, as we're going through that threshold, it, speed isn't the priority here, timing is, right? So if I rush up here, we're at cross coverage. If I rush up here, cross coverage, and I get up here before he does, all right, I'm completely exposing myself to that. So again, it doesn't have to be fast, but it needs to be synced, right? So again, as we're walking together, we're use, utilizing good team movements. I'm watching him out of my peripheral. I see that he's shifting away, and we are clearing this together using our plates and or our body and or our muzzles for ballistic response and protection. All right? Any questions so far? I got one. What's up? Oh, if they have a red X, it's a wall. Okay. Tactical fairy dust. So this one, this one, yeah. <laughs> so that one on the other side, you may not be able to see it where you're at, has a red X on it. That one, for all intents and purposes, is a doorway. We would be concerned about that, but we can only because you already knew that was in the hall. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe we do, maybe we don't. But the point is, we can only do one thing at a time. Right. So our decision in that room was to come into this room first. So it doesn't matter which. I mean, let's say there weren't red X's on all of them, and you don't know where to go. As long as you're both synced on which door to go to first, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. Yep. Oh, okay. And it's both, both, and, and we both need to realize that there needs to be some sort of security because those are vulnerabilities, right? Those yes. Are unknown danger areas. Yeah. If if we're if we're if all these doors are in play, we take this room. Uh, I'm probably going to hit this one first because I don't know what's behind these. I don't know that this is one space. Maybe that's a closet, and this is another closet. I'm not going to come hit this one and have to go back to that one. I'm going to take that one. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to take that one. I'm just going to wagon wheel, wagon wheel my way around the doors so that I don't miss anything. I don't want to leave uncleared space behind me. Yeah, and in all reality, if we looked at, for instance, let's say that was a, that we're leaving that door open, right? Or that door is there. One of us, and it would be Derek on that side, right? Once he gets past that doorway, if we're concerned about that being a threat, I can be full of security on that doorway. As Derek clears this bed space right here, he, he also basically put a muzzle on that door. And there's one door that we, we're not really talking about at all. You gotta have constant security at your six as well, right? So, you know, you're juggling a lot, and that's why, really at a minimum, you want four people on a team. I mean, that, that gives you enough control really cover that. I mean, you're always, especially the, the, the smaller of your team, right, whether it's one man or two man, the more that you, the more risk you're assuming, all right, there's more that you got to give up to gain anything. If I got to go in this room, I have to completely give up my six o'clock security. I mean, yeah, I'm always looking back, but it's not like I can be doing this up to the next door, right? So, I mean, you, you got to give something up to gain anything. And the less people that you have, the more you got to give up, and the more that you're, the more vulnerabilities you're, you're opening up for yourself. What else? Any other questions? Finishing a room and follow on rooms. All right. So what what we're gonna do is you guys will come down and grab your guns. Uh, we'll I'm work. Exiting the room. What? Exiting the room. Exiting the room. That would be the next step. I mean, we can cover it right now if we want to. So here, here's the thing, slide back down here.
which, which tactic or technique do we want to use for this? So here's the thing. Uh, if I come into this space and it's completely sterile and there's nothing else going on, and I have left, I haven't, I, I haven't been in that hallway, I've only left the hallway for a short amount of time, okay? We're simply just gonna retake that. We're gonna determine direction of travel from in here, retake it like it's a room, and then go that direction of travel. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, if I go another room or two deeper, I have to retake every single space like I've never seen it before. Does that make sense for everybody? Okay. If, if I hit this, if, if this is a short room, if I go in here and it's a closet, short room, all right, I'm gonna come back out here because we haven't given this up, right? We haven't committed to one or two more rooms. We're just gonna come back into this space, guns up, looking for work, okay? Uh, if we leave the hallway into this space, go into another space, if you've left it for more than like 10 seconds, assume it's changed, retake this just like, you've, like, like, like we have been, retake the hallway like it's a room, like you've never been there before, right? Uh, so if we're coming back, if we're clearing our way back, right, and we're coming up to this doorway, if it's open, it's very easy. And typically what we do is we identify that. We'll say hallway, 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 right? We're gonna get, that, so Gary's determined we're flowing left direction of travel. That means he's gonna give it up to me because I'm already looking to the left. And we're simply gonna retake this like it's a space, like it's a room, right? Once Gary's satisfied, I see his muzzle drop in, then we're gonna to continue to move down the hallway. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes, and, and answer that question? Any other questions before we get some reps? What we're working towards, guys, we're, we're doing bits and pieces right now. Once we get done with this, I, I'd like to get, we'll probably cut this place in half, break it up into two groups of four, and you guys are gonna work hallways into a couple rooms and, and back out, okay? And put all of the pieces together uh, with some shooting. Uh, shoot no shoot targets, and then we'll see if we can get in that force on force. Sound good? All right, downstairs.